Hello, everybody, and welcome to Uncle Todd for Christ. Thank you for joining me on this Hallelujah Friday. It is November 17th, 2023. It is 7.02 a.m., guys. I am blessed to have today off. It's a long story, but God, only God, something I had planned this weekend for several months, way before my cruise was planned. God yanked it. It, guys, it's a beautiful story. Anybody that knows me, we'll share it sometime. But God, praise praise God for each and every one of you that continue to join as we do this daily devotional out of our daily bread, and he walks with me. It's another beautiful one, guys. I know it does it sound like a broken record a lot, but I'm telling you, the more you meditate on these things, don't just read them to feel good for a brief 15 seconds. Read it. Let that word of God penetrate your heart, guys. Um, our studies today is Hebrews 4, 9 through 16. I, I just read over it multiple times, and it just keeps speaking louder and louder and louder. Why? Because that's what the Word of God is. Verse 12, the Word of God is alive and powerful. Amen. Folks, please read this stuff. Please, please, please read this stuff. Uh, today's title, again, thank you for joining me. Today's title, our representative. Now look at our background. Not only was he our substitute on the cross because of our sins, he remains our representative in heaven right beside the Father, interceding on our behalf. And guys, if, if you haven't figured out how awesome Jesus is by now, you might just want to go to a different channel, watch a couple different videos, come back when the Lord puts it on you. But by now, we should have no doubt just how freaking amazing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is. Amen. But thank you for joining me. So our representative, again, Hebrews chapter 4, 9 through 16. I feel like I just want to read it out right now, but we're going to see what the Lord, where he takes us. Uh, Hebrews 4, 16 is our lead off verse. And this is what the word of God says. And guys, this is part of my morning prayers every single day. I'm not going to tell you that you need to do this. I'm not going to tell you, guys, I don't know what works for me, works for you. All we can do is share our testimonies on how God uses us. What's your routine like? What do you do? Maybe you're lost. You, you kind of want to do a routine. Try some of these things. If they work, you'll know it. If it doesn't work, you'll know it. Why? Because the Holy Spirit now lives in you. He teaches you all things. Amen. But Hebrews 4, 16, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence. And what I have printed out in the New Living says, blah, 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 come boldly, come boldly to God's throne of grace to seek mercy in our time of need. Uh, and that's what it says, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. And part of my morning prayer, I say, Father God, I come boldly to your throne of grace through your son, Jesus Christ, I add that in there. Why? Because the word of God says nobody can come to the father except through me. So I come boldly to the throne of God's grace through Jesus Christ, seeking his mercy every single day, guys. What's God's grace? It's that unearned favor. It's giving us what we don't deserve. And what's his mercy? It's not giving us what we do deserve. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Paul Van Gorder writes this today. Or whenever he wrote it. <laughs> Guys, I'm only on my first cup of coffee, so just hang in there with me, please. In a, uh, in a small Midwestern college, a professor was asked to contact a wealthy man on behalf of the school. Whew. I can relate to that situation, reaching out. It's, it's tough, guys. It is. Special funds were needed for an expansion program, and a financier could afford a sizable contribution. Being a Christian... I'm sorry, guys, this is now smacking me in the face personally. Uh, being a Christian, the professor prayed earnestly that God would guide him. Folks, you've heard me talk. This is what I'm doing right now with this wildlife, reaching out, that humility, putting my pride aside and reaching out and asking others for help. I've I've done better than I have in the past and praise God for friends and family and people that my mother knows reaching out, guys. Funds are starting, I want to say they're, they are starting to roll in for this wildlife on Mondays. That's God's grace and mercy. Amen. Um, as he walked into the building where the man had his office, he was greeted by a young man he recognized as a former student. Whew. Lord, get me through this one. Shoo. He recalled that he had befriended this fellow at a time when he needed guidance, but he had forgotten his background. Mm-mm-mm. When the former student learned of the professor's errands while he was there, he said, come right in. My father's in here. Guys, I'm praying for that day. I am praying for that day when one of these students remembers me 
5, 10, 15, 20 years down the road. God's timing, folks. That's all we got to understand is God's timing. Me and my brother, they say it all the time. If you touch just that one person, if you reach that one person and bring them to Christ, God can take that person and use them to bring hundreds, thousands, millions to Christ. Amen. It's not about your glory. It's not about your numbers. And I'm talking to you when I say you, I'm talking about me, guys. We're the body. It's not about our glory. It's about giving God all the glory and just being so thankful that he can use you. Amen. Um, my father's right in here. Whew. Entering the office, the son introduced the professor and said simply, Dad, this is a friend of mine. He's all right. <laughs> he's <laughs> he's come on behalf of the college I attended. The father looked up at the visitor, reached for his checkbook and said, how much do you want? No questions asked. If this father's son was speaking on behalf of that professor, then the father knew I can trust my son what do you want, guys? Is this speaking to you? Jesus is interceding on behalf, saying, God, Daddy, listen, I know this one. Put yourself in there. God, Jesus is saying, I know you. I know that one, Daddy. That's that's one of the ones I died for. That's one of my favorites. That person's okay, Daddy. And Jesus and God's going to say, what can I do for you? Guys, let this speak. Woo. Um, Within minutes, the professor had a generous contribution in his pocket. Within minutes. But how much time did he spend praying on it? Did he spend too much time? Not enough? Just the right amount? I'd say the perfect amount, wouldn't you? Seated at God the Father's right hand. Seated. Seated at the God the Father's right hand is Jesus Christ, his son, who lives to make intercession for us. It wasn't good enough. He died as our substitute. He took our place on the cross. He bore our sins and our guilt and our punishment, our chastisement. He was pierced for our transgressions. All, all that stuff was upon him. That wasn't good enough for him. He, he loves us so much more than that. He is now seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding on our behalf. I love it that he's seated. He's saying there's no more that we can do, Daddy. We've done everything we can. Now it's up to them, their faith and their trust and their belief in us and what we've done for them. Amen. Um. Who lives make, but because Christ is our representative, we are encouraged to approach God's throne of grace with confidence, not with fear and trembling, not with a lack of self-confidence, not with uh, insecurity, guys. Go boldly to daddy. He knows everything anyway. He already knows your heart. What we say yesterday, knocking on the door, open it up, go in. Go in and let him come in with you and you come in with him. And just man, go boldly to God with everything so that may we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Thank you, Paul Van Gorder. And I love this quote. This has got to go on a T-shirt also. Our quote today, Jesus came into the world to talk to men for God. He is now in heaven talking to God for men. That's beautiful, folks. And please understand, it's been a while. Genesis 1, 26 and 27, God created man, male and female. So folks, by now we should know when we say men, we're talking about the, the human species, man. Man man is the human species. Anyway, guys, this is a beautiful one. I love our scriptures. I love it. Uh, verse, I'm just going to share it. I got to. I got to share the word of God with you. Just please, please read it all. And it's highlighted on today's link. Just click it. It's going to be right there. Print it out. Guys, print it out and read it later. Fold it up and stick it in your pocket. Do, do these things. But I love this. Uh, 12, the word of God is alive and powerful. We just said that. Sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, joint and marrow. 13, nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Nothing. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes. And he is the one to whom we are accountable. That is the only one we got to answer to, folks. One. And nobody's going to be there beside us holding our hands when that day comes to answer to him. So, guys, this is beautiful. I mean, the rest of these scriptures are so beautiful. Please get along. Find that time. Print it out if you got to. Write it down so you remember what they are. Go back when you know you got a quiet time to read these, study, and meditate them, and let it penetrate, saturate, marinate your heart. Amen. So, guys, thank you for joining me today. And until tomorrow, Saturday the 18th, enjoy the rest of your day, and we will see what the Lord says in. I love you guys.